Welcome to the Bayou Country Music Association show brought to you by Southern Sound Outfitters. I'm your host Jacob and today's guest I'm joined by an artist that's been on our top 25 with a single out. He is uh, took some time today to, to join us and talk about that and talk about his background, talk about some, some up and coming music. He's got uh, Mr. Blaine Rudd. How's it going Blaine? Good man, how are you? It's kind of early though. Yeah, man, it's it's uh, we gotta. I got my coffee. Hopefully, it kicks in. Or, you know, we get this interview going. But so, brother, we'll kick it off and uh, give a little background. I normally do. Uh, where are you originally from? Uh, from the Opelika, Alabama, Auburn, Alabama area. Alabama. Um, yeah, so East Alabama, over toward the Georgia line. I got a lot, a lot of talented musicians coming out of there, man. Uh, it's good to see. I know we do a lot of. A lot of stuff with the Texas scene and up up around there, but the, it, there's also a lot of talent on that uh, east side of, you know, with Alabama, Georgia, and all that. So I was I was excited when you reached out to us, man. And uh, so, what was the background of of growing up in Alabama? Obviously, uh, w- what age did you start having an interest in music and saying, "I want to sing, I want to play, I want to be an artist"? Yeah, well, my whole uh, my mom's side of the family. Uh, her mom has ten brothers and sisters, and all of them play an instrument or sing. So, um, you know, growing up around them and uh, you know watching them play in church, it sparked an interest. And then uh, my best friend at the time, um, growing up, started playing guitar when he was about eleven years old. And he kind of, you know, kind of got me a little more interested in it. Also, so I guess when I was about twelve. Um, or 13 I started playing uh, you know playing around with him and my granny taught me some you know some stuff uh, I guess the singing really didn't come along until about uh, 16 or 17 you know kind of just playing with it uh, trying to find myself vocally um, well, I, sometimes I still feel like I had not found myself vocally but um, you know just been doing it ever since playing in bars since I was 18 so coming on 10 years of, of playing the bar scene what was your musical influence that you you know lit, growing up uh, listening to music whether it was a country rock and roll or gospel anything like that the artists that you listened to that kind of made you want to mold your, your craft around that well I don't know my, my dad sings a little bit too and uh, he's always really enjoyed music and I can you know I can just remember um riding around with him, you know, we were running dogs hunting or, you know, just whatever, you know, cruising around the road beside the house. Um, he always had had some music going. But uh, I think, and, I, and I've always loved music, but I think when I was about 14 or 15, he had this Merle Hager Greatest Hits album. And uh, he got in the kick where he played it over and over and over again, I feel like. And, uh, I fell in love kind of with the way, you know, those songs were written and, and, and how they played out and how they were so deep and affectionate and, um, you know, the, the really distinct guitar riffs and all the real stuff. I mean, it's just, yeah, I don't know. I definitely, uh, I definitely agree. You know, there are so many talented artists back in that, in Merle's day, and he, he to me, seems to be the one that, Kind of gets overlooked with the Waylands and the Johnny Cash and the George Jones, and but Merle Haggard had so many great songs and so many, you know, like you said, powerfully written songs, and uh, definitely one of my my favorites. So that, that's an awesome, uh, awesome. I, I get a lot of people say, you know, oh well, uh, you know, it's George. Jo-. They pick the easy answer, but I, I like that one. I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if I. Uh I mean, so I, uh, there's a long list of, of people that have inspired me, you know, as far as music goes. And um, I just, that, that album to me really stands out, that greatest hits album. I mean, I bet we played it over and over and over again. And, uh, and to be that young and, and and fall in love with that kind of music, you know, was a little a little different, so. Yeah, and you, you mentioned how, you know, you... Your father was uh, singing music, and he was into music. Your family was into music. 
what age did you, was it around that same age, six, 14, 15, 16, that you started to try to write some music on your own? I think I probably wrote my first song when I was 17, um, 16 or 17 for, you know, a little girlfriend that I had back then. Uh, you know, and I kind of just dabbled around writing in my notebook during high school. And then um, my senior year, the yeah, you know, after the, I forget how school goes now. So you start in the summer, right? So, yeah, so the spring semester um, of my senior year, I started really writing some songs. Uh, and I did, right after I graduated, I did a little 10-song album seven songs that I that I wrote and um, three that another guy had written um, that my, my uncle set me up with um, so I guess I kind of you know probably from my spring of my senior year through that summer um, after I graduated that was really when I hit my you know hit my writing pretty hard um, and then after that album <clears throat> kind of dropped uh, I had a little song on there called The Song She Wrote and it's you know I appreciate the song because it did a lot for me at that time and opened up a lot of doors but you know now I can't stand playing it when somebody requests it because it's so old and it's, it's just nowhere near as good as you know the stuff I write now um, but yeah, yeah kind of that kind of opened up the doors for me that first little album that I wrote um, back when I was 18 so going from from what you said of high school and graduating and getting into the music what give us a little background on the road to where you are now i mean are you currently still living in uh alabama or are you around yeah, still living in alabama. Um, so really you know how it started i graduated um and, and really, I had been playing a couple bar gigs, you know, up to that point, right before I graduated, just local stuff, um, you know, like seven to nine type thing during week night, you know yeah, what I mean? Not yeah. like full-blown bar gigs, but, um, <clears throat> so right after I graduated, I got in um, with this place called the Auburn Oyster Bar up here in Auburn, and it's really where I built my fan base. Um, and kind of started to spread my name and, and, uh, and start really pushing my my musical agenda, you know, at the time, which I didn't know what it was, but, it, I, you know, I enjoyed playing and singing and, and, and drinking free beer, you know what I mean? So yeah. I, I kind of, uh, and that led into um, some different gigs, some bigger type stuff, and, uh, and that led, I see about... 2000, I did that for about two years. In about 2011, um, I won a contest called Alabama Idol. It was a one-time thing, um, but what you got was an opportunity to open up for um, Dirk Bentley and Easton Corbin and Craig Morgan wow. at uh, the Auburn Arena. The new, there was a brand new arena they built in Auburn back then. So I did that in the fall. Yeah, it was in the winter of. Uh, 2012, so right after that 2011 skin. Um, and I had just gotten my band together about six months before I won that competition, so, you know, we were all greenhorns in a way. Some of the guys had, uh, had been playing with uh, an artist that's in Nashville now, Weston Burt. Uh, uh, so I had a couple of... Um, couple of good musicians that, that helped me and, and it was just a new thing for us um, so and that opened up tons of doors after I uh, so did the whole thing at the Auburn Arena so. did you get the, at the chance did you get a chance to meet all the guys like Dirks and Easton and them or you just kind of opened up before the show yeah I got a chance to uh, to meet those guys they're pretty cool I think Dirks is one of the nicest nicest people I've met that I've opened up for and Thomas Red. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of Thomas Rhett's music now, but he was so nice. Yeah. I opened up for him a couple of years later, and he was extreme. He watched my show from the side of the stage. Um, it was just, he, he was pretty awesome. So that that opened a lot of doors, obviously, for you by by playing for those guys, and, and where did that end up leading? Yeah, so right after that, um, my band started catching a little fire, and uh I started booking with a little a little agency in Nashville. Um, you know, 
I was staying really busy, and uh, I stayed busy for a couple of years. Um, you know, I opened up for uh, um, the Van Perry, Rascal Flats, uh, uh, Montgomery Gentry, Justin Moore, um, Dustin Lynch, I already say that. Adam Hood, a local guy around here, I've shared the stage with him. Uh, I mean, a lot of folks. It just really, really opened some doors with some other entertainment groups and um, got to play some rodeos. I've done, done Luke Combs um, and stuff like that. But the Luke Combs was in the second part of my, my career. I hadn't told you the, the rise and fall story yet. So <laughs> through 11... Um, 12, 13, 14, I was doing all this cool stuff, opening up for all these folks. Oh, Brad Paisley, that was, that was a fun one, too. Um, but, so I was doing all that, and I, um, right there toward the end of, end of 2014, or in the middle of 2014, I met a girl, and, um, kind of, kind of settled down a little bit, and decided I was going to take a break. Yeah. So the, I was going to take a six month break. Well, that turned into a year and a half. <laughs> okay, wow. so I lost my I lost my head of steam. I had I lost you know a yeah. lot of Momentum. a lot of my regular fans. Uh, you know, in that year and a half, two years to to marriage and kids and family and and so I, you know I pretty much lost lost it all. Not really. It, it, that kind of came to fruition in the last few months after I, um, after I've been kind of hitting it hard again. So, I, you know, about a year and a half, two years ago, I'm like, I'm gonna start back. I'm gonna start back playing. I'm gonna start easing into it a little more and and really focus on writing some different stuff and, and try to find myself as a songwriter um, because I know if you put me on stage in front of five thousand people, I can entertain them. I know that. It's yeah. not my problem. It's, it's a just, big, I, I, it's I, a big thing. I never found myself as a as a songwriter. Uh, right. I never found my true identity as a songwriter. If that makes sense. Yeah. And I still haven't because every time I, I write, uh, I may write a, a Johnny Paycheck song. I may write a Conway Twitty song, or I may write a Luke Combs song. You know, as far as the style goes. Yeah. So I still hadn't found myself as far as as far as what I want to be as an artist. But, I don't know. I just, I love it, man. I, uh, during my break, I got to see a lot of my buddies that I grew up playing with, moved to Nashville and become successful. Um, and, you know, before I quit, I was, I was doing what they was doing. You know, I threw my, I threw my, threw my stuff down the drain and they took advantage of it. Well, man, I mean, it's it's a tough. I, people don't really understand the lifestyle of being a, a, a artist or musician of how much time it takes to put work in and put hours in and always, constantly have to perfect your craft. And I mean, it's tough. And I mean, for you to choose, a, you know, to take a break from that for family, I'm sure there's no shame in that for anyone. And losing that steam and that 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 momentum. But I have to say, you know, you mentioned now this is kind of your second run. Uh, I, I I believe that you're going to do just fine, man. I mean, so going on that second steam, you mentioned you, you played with Luke Combs recently, or? Yeah, so uh, so right when I'm, I'm getting back in and I'm playing some acoustic gigs around town, um, my buddy, Hunter Price, he owns an entertainment group around here. Um, they did the Bulls, Bands, and Barrels thing. Uh-huh. Have you heard of those? Yes, sir. Yeah, they're, they're cool events. Well, my buddy Hunter uh, owns that brand and owns the, the entertainment group that, that does all that. So, uh, and he was part of the reason why I got to open up for all those cool folks, too. So, respect for him if, if he ever hears this. But he's so busy now, he can hardly text back. But So, uh, <clears throat> so Hunter had a, he needed a spot filled, um, for that show in Montgomery, and uh, man, I, I got I threw a band together, threw a band together with a couple of my buddies that, that live in Nashville now, um, and it was, you know, it was the funnest show I've ever played. It was right in the middle of a loop of Hurricane. Um, it was like the the week that Hurricane went number one, yeah. and the crowd. I mean, oh my god, it was so electric. Uh, 
even you know even when they was listening to me they was electric because I was playing them I played a few originals but I was you know I was there to get them warmed up yeah I wasn't there to try to play on my record um I was there to get them warmed up so man I I think I play uh play a couple of those sing along songs but I think I play a great day to be alive um at one point during the set and you know how the song comes in like straight acoustic yeah I mean, I kicked it off, and I bet you all 5,000 people were singing that song back to me, and you could feel it in your chest. Yeah. And, you know, after that night, I was like, <clears throat> I just entertained, you know, I had a bunch of people in the crowd that, that were my fans, but I just entertained, I'm going to say 4,000 or 4,500 people that didn't even know who the hell I was. Yeah. But, and, and I, and I, I feel like I melted their their whole face off, you know. And maybe I didn't. Maybe it's just me feeling that way because I'm I'm confident. Um, but I was like, you know, I need to I need to give this a little shot. I'll keep working my job. I'll keep raising my family. Um, I'll try to stay level headed, but I want to try to just give it one more shot. So started back. Uh, <clears throat> well, I had been writing. I had been writing again for about a year prior to that. So. Um, I'd had a new, pretty, a pretty good new catalog built up as far as music goes, um, and, and I kind of just took that and, and I've been using that as my as my momentum ever since then. So, and which that, and now it now it's back up to where I could literally play three days a week if I wanted to. Yeah, man, that that's a, that's a very uh, compelling story for the second coming. Because I mean, man, I, I know I, I got a chance to go watch a Luke Combs show earlier in the year in February and he played a small you know this is probably around the time when that's whenever he had his uh, Don't Tip Me With A Good Time tour and he had to he actually come back and did a second leg of that because it was so successful and they played at a smaller venue in Shreveport and he brought uh, he open for him was uh, Drew Parker and Ashley McBride and I mean I love Drew Parker Man, I, 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 when we went and watched them, and it was to see all of those people, all of the, all of them, all three artists play in that smaller venue. I was like, man, this will never. They're all. We all know Luke's just broke out completely, and I mean, Ashley McBride is having on the verge of that, and Drew Park was a great guy, and I got to actually see him and talk with him. He was outside when we were walking out by the merchandise booth, and I recognized him and talked with him, and he's got, you know, he, he, the level is gonna go shoot up, but. To see all those three people, it's like you know you have those those venues and concerts where you know it's something special that is not going to happen again, and I no. that electricity that you mentioned, and so that electricity ultimately fueled you to say, look, I I, I need to go get back into this and, and make this you know something real this time. Yeah, I, I, like I told you, I had been writing again and been playing again for about a year up until the, that show in August last year. Um, but but I hadn't really decided if, at that point if I wanted to really just hit it hard, you know what I mean? But after that show and after feeling, you know, after feeling the way that that made me feel, I was like, you know what? Why not? Why not just give it some kind of half a shot anyway? And I can't. I, I've got a good job and I got a, a wife and kids, so I can't really give it a a full blown move to Nashville type shot. But but social media now and look, I took social media for granted my whole first part of my career. That's why if you really look into me, you may not have seen that I was pretty successful a few years ago. You know, because I took social media advantage. I just, I mean, not advantage. I took a it took it for granted yeah. I didn't use it I didn't post a lot I didn't care to because because I was having four or five hundred people at my shows so, you know, yeah it's amazing that my man. friends that, I, that had been watching me for years it's amazing so. what social media ha- can do and the careers that it shot out because of the uh, I look at it as a, a, a f- free promotion I guess you could say but you know, this artist getting discovered nowadays is it's off of YouTube or off of social media posts of other people or just you know mm-hmm. sprout that and that's that's something definitely has changed the whole game of music in general uh, and promoting and stuff. So yeah, definitely that that is a big thing nowadays. But man, I'll actually t- I came across 
I'm gonna mention that. I mean, your your song "Fake ID" and you, it, the the story behind where I came across it was on social media, on Spotify, which I look at as a social media thing because it's you know you follow artists and you get. I actually I don't recall what playlist I was on. It might have been like the little radar playlist that they kind of make for you, but uh, the see your song came on and and I seen "Fake ID" and you, and I was like. Well, first of all, the, the the title itself caught me, and then when I listened to it, I was like, "Man, this is just who's this guy? Like, this is a great song." So I, I you know, I started asking around and put it up there, and man, it's it's it has not lost steam on our count on our top twenty-five list, and it's a great song and a great just you can relate to it. It, it reminds me almost of like you said that senior year or that. When you you have a love or something, all you need is that that moment of just you know you got that someone and you just want to go out there and just all I need is you and the fake IDs and some beer and go. It's it's you can relate to it, man. And I think that's what makes songs nowadays so great and so popular is is that the the all, the the fan base can say, hey, I can live this, you know. So did you have let's let's go into the story of that song. Mm-hmm. So. Uh- I wrote the hook for that song um, in February of this year, and I wrote it. I think I I was actually just scrolling through. I get sometimes I get bored and I just you know get on YouTube and listen to covers and and watch stuff. And, and Charlie Muncaster and Gary and Muscadine Bloodline. Charlie was my buddy. He came up in, in the Auburn music scene too. Um, I was listening to something on their profile or something they had shared. And it was uh, one of their songs called "Wasn't Nothing Much to Do." Yeah. And uh, man, it gave me chill bumps, and I was like, you know, I've written tons of songs about my hometown or about you know that kind of cliche type stuff. Um, and fake ID and you is even kind of cliche, but I was like, I want to write a song. And I'd already had this hooked, but I was like, I want to write it. When I heard that song that, that Charlie Gear wrote, I was like, I want to write a song that gives you chill bumps. I was like, and maybe, I want to write a song that gives me chill bumps. You know, maybe some of my songs I've written before has given somebody else chill bumps, but, you know, nothing I had written before really, you know, grabbed me by the, by the testicles. You know what I mean? Can I yeah. say testicles? You can say whatever you want, brother. <laughs> okay. And, uh, I was like, I want to write something that really just, uh, really just grabs me. And I looked at that hook for a month. I mean, I could not figure out what I wanted to do with it, but I know I wanted it to be, you know, something that everybody could relate to, but try to make it as professional as possible and, and, and write a medley. I mean, it ran write a melody that, that, that's different. That, like, when you hear that, at 18, it didn't seem like a dream you made on our stranger trip. Yeah. Like that melody, the way it kind of rolls. I think, you know, when I, when I finally hit that niche and, on that melody I was like okay I'm gonna write the song to this type of feel anyway so uh, I was playing a little festival gig with um in West Point Georgia and we were sitting out back in the green room it was a tent um I had an air conditioner though so it was kind of comfortable comfortable green room but I was sitting around the guys I was like y'all wanna write a song they were like yeah well we tried to write on the topic of fake ID and you so when we're sitting there trying to write it I had written a little bit of that first verse and gotten uh, an idea from um, Bobby Cutshaw uh, the bass player that day about something about a dream or uh, at 18 it seemed and I was like at 18 it seemed and he was like let's make it something about a dream well there was some rap music played in the background and we were like screw it we can't write to this right now you know yeah well you know let's talk about it later well we never talked about it but that next Monday or Tuesday I was looking at um my notes for the song and um I literally wrote it and you know an hour after that it hit all at one time it just hit me all at once yeah so funny story is I had already had another song I'd written uh, in pre-production to get recorded as my single like they were cutting it that Thursday in Nashville they were cutting my single and uh 
so I called the producer. I was like, hey, I just wrote a song, perfect summer song. You know, my, the other single I was going to release was more like a fall type single. Like, yeah, uh, like, hey guys, let's, a, let's pump the brakes. I got something good here. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's hang out a minute. Let's... So I called the producer. He was like, I said, I, he was like, said to me, well, I was in my truck at work. <laughs> and uh, so I just sing it to him. Hadn't even played the song on the guitar yet at all. I sing it to him. He was like, okay, uh, I'm, I'm catching what you're throwing. He was like, uh, run to your house during lunch break, play it on the guitar, and, um, and send me a, you know, a work tape of it. And let me see what I can put together as far as pre-production goes before I get up there Thursday. He was like, if I can't get it put together, then we're cutting Missing You. And I hate the fact that my other songs got you in the title too, but um, anyway, uh, I was like, well, I was like, well, all right. I was like, do what you can do, man, because I've got to, I've got to release this, because I plan on releasing my singles the day that I opened up for the Brothers Osborne in April, um, just to kind of give me some steam on that platform, you know, uh-huh. kind of use use their crowd to my advantage, if you will. So, um, so I was like. He was like, okay, it's going to take a miracle to put all this stuff together and, and get it released by then. I was like, well, screw it. Let's just do it. Let's do this song. If we can't get it out by then, then so be it. You know, but this is the song that I've got to put out for this song. You know, this has got to be it. You know, so he got, he did it, man. He threw it together. His name's Josh Bright, by the way. He's, he's awesome. Good guy to work with. Um, but... So we threw it together and, and got it released on time, and it's, it's really just done pretty well, man. I don't know. Yeah, definitely. It, the song itself, just the song, it catches you, and it gives you this just the the melody, the, your vocals on it. I can listen to it over and over; it never gets old for me. But it's the song that once you listen to it a few times and you learn the words, it's one of those songs that when it comes on, you just, without even thinking, you're singing along to it, man. Yeah. yeah. And that's definitely, I think, has to go with the, the, the success of it. And we're, we're going to, well, like I said, it's been on the top 25 by Country Music Association uh, playlist, Spotify and all that. And I know you have it across Spotify and Apple Music and Google Play. But we're going to play it right now. And... Uh, and let I'm gonna let you introduce it and let the folks uh, hear it. Okay, yeah. So uh, it's called Fake I In You. Like I said, I wrote the the hook forever ago. It seems like, but um, and when it comes on, you're gonna hear this big baritone type type guitar lick uh, that actually got thrown in the day we cut vocals. So the the feel of the song was a little bit different before um, I cut the vocal on it. But I, you know, to me, like you said, the when you hear the when the, the beat starts and you hear it, um, this this baritone part in the in the beginning, we threw that together the day we cut vocals, and I think it is, it really stands out. You know, is that that key lick that really just catches you and gets the song grooving. So, um, spin it if you want to. Let them hear it. There it is, folks. Fake ID and you. We're gonna go ahead and play it for you guys. Plans just a suitcase and hauling ass. At 18, it seemed like a dream you made on our senior trip. Didn't have money for the cruise, everybody went on, so we did the strip. That breeze blowing off the Gulf Coast, it's something to your hair. The way you're Condo 
18 put you over the bridge We stopped for a 12 pack of tacos A little vodka for your fix Second day in a row Still drunk, driving slow In the parking lot I forgot her flip-flop Piggyback bottle pop Man, that sand was hot Something to your hair The way your eyes match the backdrop Was there even anybody there? The whole place crowded with people But girl, you already knew I'm fine with the case of the Fake ID in you Something to your hair The way your eyes match the backdrop Was there even anybody there? The whole place crowded with people But girl, you already knew I'm fine with a case of beer And kind of tea Three days of sunsets over the beach The case of beer Big ID And there it is, everybody, Fake ID and You, perfect summertime song. If that one don't get stuck in your head, I don't know uh, I don't know what will. We're, today's guest, we got none other than the artist behind it, Mr. Blaine Rudd, and he's been talking to us about his upbringing and his music, musical career. And uh, we, we were talking about the, uh, the the story of Fake ID and You, and, and we played it for you guys. And, and now I'm going to ask him, Blaine... What, what kind of music? You mentioned you had cut a single before this one, and you did actually, you know, it kind of bumped it. But uh, what kind of music you got in the works right now? Yeah, so uh, the next one we're going to release is a song that I wrote with my little brother. Um, it's called Working On Me. Um, it's, it's a really good song. It's going to slow it down a little bit. It's going to be more of that ballad-type um, country song feel. And uh, I think we're going to release that one sometime right before the fall, you know, right around football season. So um, we're actually going to cut it June 2nd, I think he said he's going to cut. I don't, I can't get my, I don't know my dates right, but sometimes in the first of June, next week or next week or two, we're going to cut that song and go up and do vocals on it um, pretty soon and get that in the works. We're going to take it easy with that one, though. We're going to make sure it's right. We're going to spend some time on it. Um, instead of pushing it so, so fast like we did Fake ID and you, um, kind of try to fill it up and, and make it a big country ballad and see what that does. Let people see the other side of my, of my songwriting. But and speaking of songwriting, too, and I failed to mention earlier, um, my little brother really sparked an interest in a, in a different type of songwriting for me. Um, and uh, I, I feed off him, and he feeds off me. So we've written some good stuff together, too, you know, along with him. I'm telling you, in the last probably three months, I've written in five or six songs that that I would want everybody to hear on a record. Um, it, it, I've been in a pretty good little spot co-writing, co-writing with other folks or writing with my brother. Um, dude, I told you about earlier, I've, I've been writing a little bit with a guy named Corey Rhodes. He's from Kentucky, but he lives up here in Alabama now. Um, he's a hell of a songwriter. And, you know, playing with him, my buddy Caleb King. Caleb's got a, a single coming out soon. And another buddy um, named John Boy Story. Been writing with him a pretty good bit. He's got a single coming out. Uh, extremely soon that, that I kind of co-wrote on a little bit with him. It's called Ultimate Sin. It's, 
it's a pretty cool song. Um, it's just, man, it's just, you know, around here, um, a lot of us have that same idea. We're trying to write the best song we can write. You know, whether whether I, I bring in two verses and a chorus to somebody, and then they and they've got some idea for a hook, I mean, for a bridge or, yeah. or something at home. You know, you don't, we don't mind helping each not, other out, man. It's all about the right. music. Right, we're not, you know, we're not, uh, we're not big time, so we're not looking, you know, it's not looking like we're going to sell a million records anytime soon. But if we if we work together and and we've got a good song or a good hook and, and we want to you know, co-write amongst each other and play it amongst our own fans just here in South Diamond, Georgia. Um, and we don't mind doing that. So uh, every little bit, every time our name's mentioned in some other platform or some other person, it helps our agenda now. So Yeah, it's, definitely. Uh, and, man, I I have friends and buddies that, that <laughs> songwrite in Nashville, man, and, and they do the same even at that, that next that level their own. It's... You know, it's always these songwriters get together and it just pops off, and you know, uh, and so that's I love the song. I, I'm a huge music fan, but the songwriting really gets me in the lyrics and and learning that. And uh, I, uh, one of my friends that I mentioned that I mentioned about it, it was uh, Dawson Edwards. He's he's from uh, Georgia, Rome, Georgia, and he uh, signed with BMG Nashville as a writer this past year. And, Man, he's got some some songs. Uh, you know, Joe Fortner's song "Stereotype." Him and him and another buddy of mine had they just kind of wrote it out of the box and and just the stories that they he t- tells me about how they just kind of you know all help each other out. It's it's that's what it's all about, man. Yeah, well, everybody's trying to make a dollar, and it's, it's you know everybody wants to write with, with whoever's hot at that point, and who you know everybody wants to write with their buddies and um, up there. And, Everybody's looking for a cut. It's so hard to make money off a song nowadays. You know, you you gotta you gotta have you know a hundred million streams to make any damn money. But yeah, it, it is, and and it's amazing how songs can come. You know come to life even years later, and when it comes to whole streaming and stuff like that. And uh, but well, I mean, like, okay, good example: Steve Mugler, Sitcoms. Yep. I mean, that was a great song. He released it like the end of 2014 for the first time as a single. And now it's picking up steam again and all these college kids are yeah. loving it. I see Instagram stories with people singing Sick Case and I'm like, man, I've known all the words of that for three years. Yeah, and it, another song that was on our list is uh, a buddy of mine, James Dupre, who's actually from the same hometown as me, released this uh, uh, album two years ago called Stone to Death. And my favorite song on it was Hurt Good and he just released it as a single and now it's climbing up music road charts you know two years later And but it's just the journey it's taking you know it's it's crazy mm-hmm. well it's all about building fans like we talked about Muscat on Bloodline earlier um, a little or maybe I just mentioned Charlie's name but yeah you had mentioned Charlie and uh they have a rabid rabid fan base yeah, they do. It, un, it, I, I would describe them as an underground, you know, underground is in the sense of their fan base knows them better than anybody, and they're not, they should be in the top list of artists in, music, in the country music scene, but they're kind of not because of that. But now with their success and that fan base, I think that's going to make them jump even more. Well, they will be, you know, I, I would assume anyway eventually because they, they, they mix so good together they're extremely talented um, but you know and another and like we mentioned earlier about social media and, and stuff um, sometimes you don't need a record deal to no to, to, I mean look at uh, Cody Johnson yeah no, he, he, look, sold, yep. he sold out a 75,000 seat arena you know at the, at the Houston Rodeo yep and he didn't have a record deal Nope. But it's all about if you got those rabid fans like he's got and Musket Iron had. Building the fan base, party, man. And you interact with them yep. through social media. Like Charlie and Gary are the kings of social media interaction. <laughs> yeah. And I think that, I think that really fuels their, their fans' fire. And much respect for them. Yeah, and, and I think the social media aspect of now, you know, with the more personal 
social media like Snapchats and your, you know, Twitters and stuff like that where it's not so much controlled by an artist as management or somebody. It's actually them interacting on a video chat or on a post. It gives the fans a, a more personal, uh, you know, input into their life and, and interaction. So I think that's what makes, you know, artists like Muscadine and, and uh, you know, just like Cody Johnson and in general that, that – have feed off the social media and their fans and have such a strong fan base from the social media accounts and from all that and you're right man you don't need it i mean that's what that's what bayou country music is all about man we uh we support independent artists and try to get them out there but really i mean you, you don't need a big record deal to to have you need your fans you know and uh if you can sell out arenas like that it's pretty uh it's, it's pretty a testament to what we, we were talking about yeah, there, there's a way to make money in the music industry without being uh, on, on big machine labels. Yep. You know? Yep. Totally, man. And that's that's uh, I guess the whole the whole motive behind what what we're doing is trying to get artists out there to the public, not so much to these record big names. But it's exactly what you said of getting people out there to our listeners and our fans and people that can say hey i heard this person and gain a fan base and, and a repertoire not so much as you know a nashville art uh, label coming along so it's definitely what we're out to do but you think you think of how many you think now even now tons of, of, of really great artists get overlooked for their their careers entirety and never really take off and even with having all this social media and stuff could you imagine 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, where there are just as many good musicians then as there are now? Yeah. But that, but that no, didn't no, have that. Right, right. But how many of those great musicians were born and dead? And nobody ever even heard of them because they're, you know, because they played at a, a saloon, you know, with an acoustic guitar for tips and a, yep. you know, and a few beers, you know, for. Yep, it's true. It's very life. true. It's very true. Or how many, or how many times did, did did war or uh or you know or Vietnam or something take a a nineteen year old boy's life that was a, a hell of a songwriter and guitar player and that we don't know about? Yep. So, so I think you know with, with the way the country is today and the way things are, you know, sure the the place was in shambles. You know, as far as as far as what this country could be, but yeah. um, but we still gotta you know be thankful for what we have. And, I definitely and, agree, man, and, and yeah. you know be thankful and, and all these younger artists and that get success from that can uh, take a take a note of what Blaine just said and see you know the uh, abilities that you have now in this day and age of getting known is just a very very big thing to be thankful for and respect compared to back in the day when there was just as not if not more talented people that just didn't get seen because there was no outlet or no broadcasting that seen these guys and you know and you mentioned i'll even go into it imagine the artists that were taking you know their lives short you know just by tragedies and i'm a big big believer in this statement that george jones has probably got you know a billion songs that he's a top of the top of the top when it comes to country music uh in the past but i always think of what if keith whitley would have still been alive today i believe that would have been a whole nother discussion because that was another amazing talented musician that was taken too soon and uh you know imagine the songs that he had that didn't get released and so yeah it's uh it's a blessing every day we wake up, man, and, and these artists that, that are taking off and get some steam going. Uh, I, I guess you kind of got to, you know, when you got all that going, you, you, you've lived it, obviously, by saying, you know, taking a break from it and losing that steam. You kind of take it for granted when you're in it because you don't realize, you know, but it's definitely yeah. something to be thankful for. I took, it, I took it for granted for sure. I got, I got way too caught up in this. And the drinking and the women and the, you know. Well, I, I I gotta say, man, the second the second come around, I uh, just the story you've told, you know, of, of finding yourself with songwriting and obviously you're you the entertainer, you you got that down, 
and yeah, the, the songwriting is evolving and, and I think it's going to you have a, a career that is nowhere near dead coming back it's 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 going to be way better now and who knows you know 10 years from now you might be able to look back and say I'm glad that that happened because it kind of made me into the better all around artist that I am you know but yeah man uh, so let's let's take a little break from that and talk just about yourself what hobbies do you like to do outside of music oh man uh, I'm a jack of a lot of trades to be honest with you Jacob I like love to cook that's probably one of my most favorite things to do um, that's why I'm up so early this morning I, I got a, a pork butt on the, on the smoker and I'm going to do some ribs today and some Man, I mean, you, you, what time's it gonna be done? I might have to come down there. You can probably make it up here in time. <laughs> it takes a while. It's slow yeah. and slow. Yeah. Here. Well, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, I like that. And I play a little softball and some golf, and mm. obviously my, my guitar. I like playing the guitar. Uh, like to lift weights. So what? What is uh? You, you listen to music obviously all the time I, I don't know if you listen on your phone or whatever what, as of right now what's the last three songs you've listened to on your phone on iPod whatever it is that you you know listen um Cassie Ashton Taxidermy badass song uh I'm a big Tyler Childers guy right now so I've had had that Tyler Childers record on that new one on replay um, the Purgatory album, Feathered Engines by him, the great song, uh, Band of Clothes, Honk Tonk Play. Um, and I've got a, a playlist <clears throat> on my, on my Apple Music. I just got it named Young Guns. Uh huh. Um, man, these guys on here, Randall King, Eric Dillon, my God, I love Eric Dillon. Yeah, he he just released that new album, and that's enough. It's it's amazing the amount of just music oh, that is shooting right now. Holy shit! You know, it's like, he's one of those guys that if it wasn't, he's one of those guys that if it wasn't for for social media, I wouldn't even know about it. Yep. I I love him to death. I love his songwriting. Um, you, the brothers off worn out. That's an, that's I'm not a big mainstream guy promoting, but that mainstream albums I'd have to say that yeah their album is without a doubt just uh, the whole thing is amazing. No doubt, it, I, I love it. I, I listen to it from start to finish at least once a week. Definitely. Uh, and then you mentioned Randall King. Dude, I'm a huge Randall King fan, man. That whole album that he has, I, I mean, it to me I play it and it's like. I'm waking up in the 90s listening, you know, riding that, just every song has that 90s country that that almost Alan Jackson, George Strait, Tracy Lawrence, Joe Diffie feel, and it's like so refreshing, man, and he, uh, he's actually going to be playing locally around here in a few months, and uh, been might even have an interview with him up, but I, didn't wanna, I don't want to reveal that, but yeah, just the amount of people and the amount, it, it's, it's awesome, man, it really is. Yeah, I mean, we mentioned Drew Parker earlier. Um, another, another great guy, another great artist. I've been, I've been wearing him out, which I've, I've, I've been following him for four or five years. I know since he, I was following him during his move to Nashville, so, but I'm actually opening up for him June 22nd, so that'll be fun. Yeah, that, that's that's a little story that I love. I, I, I followed him on social media and stuff. I knew who he was, and when we went to that, that Luke concert, I'm walking out. And they had a little Luke Combs merchandise table, and Drew Park was just standing there, just by himself. And I looked to my left, and I'm like, "What?" And I looked at my girlfriend. I was like, "Do you know that? That's that's Drew Parker. He was opening up for the, you know, and he's standing here like a security guard." So I walked up to him and went talk to him, and I, we had new a uh, few people in common and mutual people. And then obviously, once I walked up there, then people wanted to come take pictures and stuff. And, but yeah, he's a great guy, man, and and. Uh, got some good stuff good his ep's you know incredible and hopefully he's got some new you know album to come in the future and yeah you mentioned you're going to be opening for him that's something i wanted to get into as far as uh we talked your music we talked the the songs let's talk shows you got some stuff lined up man i mean obviously it's summertime you got any big 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 things coming um Nothing really huge, but like I said, I can I can stay as busy as I wanted to. I've got 
so much going on with family and, and my real job and all that. But yeah, I've got, um, I'll be at, at Moe's, the barbecue in Auburn here next week, uh, play in Columbus, Georgia the following weekend. Um, I'll be working that next weekend. Then I've got Drew Parker, June 22nd. Um, you know, private party the 23rd. Do, do you post all this to your social medias and all that for people to keep up with? Or <laughs> Yeah, so, like I told you, I don't do a good job keeping up with all that. Um, well, man, you, you, it's time you to can, learn. <laughs> you, can follow my, you can follow my band page, um, Blade or Rough. We've actually been in the process of digging my website out of, out of the grave over the weekend, so I'm hoping to have it back up by, by the end of this week. Um, so definitely when I get the website back up and it's blaneroad.com um, you can type the URL in right now but it just shows a white page because <laughs> you kind of let it slide it's a clean um, slate it's a clean yeah, slate kind of let it slide through my fingers during my little uh, break I took but um, yes yeah, so I just follow the, the band page or, or uh, follow me on Instagram please Instagram is the key to everything now yeah. obviously from what I hear so and also, I'm going to say it for you. Go go buy the song, Fake ID, and you independent artist music, buy the song. This is what they their career is for. I mean, you know, go get it on Spotify. Get it on Apple Music. Whether you have Android, you have an iPhone, you have a Windows, whatever it is, go purchase this. Go All these artists we've been talking about, I mean, support these guys. These, these guys live off of this. I mean, they love what they do, but at the end of the day, it's their paycheck. Yeah, but man, it's it's you you des- you deserve it. I mean, it's your song. It's it's your you know somebody's gonna get money off of it, and I'd rather it be you. You know what I mean? You're right. Oh yeah, you're right. But I was gonna mention, like, I don't see how some of these guys survive, man. Yeah, it's a, it's definitely a dog fight with people that are a hundred percent that is there to living, and that's why I say it, man. Uh, I preach it all the time. It's these independent groups that aren't signed, and it just buy the music man it's what it is it's you love it buy it get it whether it's whether you pay monthly for spotify or apple music or whatever it is you know that that's something i'll preach all the time and i want to ask we talked about a lot of artists on this interview if you could have a dream elaboration whether it be sitting in a room songwriting or cutting a, an album or record with any artist as in mainstream big time or just Somebody that you might know friends with, what is one of the, the dream scenario that you would like to have a collaboration with? This is an absolute no brainer. You don't even have to think about it, Eric Church. You know what is amazing to me? Every time I ask this question, it's the same answer, and I am without a doubt a huge Eric Church fan because of his writing and his songs and everything. And it, it amazes me, dude, it sends chills because every person I ask this to on this show says it, and it makes me happy because it's like, yeah. that's the man. Yeah, if we're, if we're talking mainstream, he's the only, he's one of the few I respect fully. Yeah. That, that, that just built his complete brand off of not giving a fuck about what nobody thinks. Yep, and I, I think it was yesterday I seen a thing, maybe it was Whis- Whiskey Riff that put a post, it was 18 songs that Eric Church had never released his singles that were better than number one song on the radio charts, and it was like, I loved it, because it's so true, and he he's without a doubt my ultimate favorite when it comes to songwriter, musician, and mainstream, like, that he, like you said, he's just modern day outlaw, doesn't care what the record people think. And he's gonna write what he wants, and it comes from the heart. And he's he's inspired a lot of people, you know. So that, that was the right answer. If this was a game show, you just won. Yeah, I've uh, I've given Eric Church enough of my money for him to at least give me some backstage passes. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen him seven times, and we're going Saturday to see him again. So that'll be eight. <laughs> so, I love him. Who? who? He, he, Who's he with? Who's he got with him right now on tour? Well, he don't have a tour going right now. He don't have one announced anyway. He's doing this uh, doing this festival in Alabama called Rock the South Saturday. 
Um, I don't know what he's doing as far as his tour goes. But last year, you know, he had Brother Osborne. Yeah. And then uh, he had Luke Combs a few years back. Yeah. And, uh, um, but he, he hadn't really, he hadn't announced the tour for some reason. I don't know what he's doing. I imagine he's just writing about a thousand great songs and, you know, just we're going to release yeah. it, you know. I imagine he really don't even need to work at all. Nope, probably not. But you know uh, somebody that such as himself, he can't not write songs and put stuff out, man. I mean, that's just in his blood. Well, you know, in my song, I say Eric Church Playlist and Bar Fights. I think, I think since 06 or 07, I've been just in love with Eric Church. Yep. The first, the first song that made me fall in love was when he had guys like guys like me, and that was, you know, I listened to that when I was younger, and then I just, I have every Air Church, put, you know, album, <laughs> everything, and uh, that's that's, I could do a whole segment on Eric Church, but yeah, that that's a that's a winning answer right there, folks. Air Church, so, definitely. So uh, let's see here. We we talked shows, we talked music, we talked a little bit about the. About the up and coming stuff you got, uh, you said you got a single coming maybe in the fall, uh, so we'll be looking into that. And what's what's the plans as far as you know? Next, say a year from now, you you, you plan on coming out with an album, or you just want to take it, see where it goes with the, with the singles? Well, I wanted to I wanted to have an album released by this time next year. Um, but I don't know. I want to keep writing and see what I come up with. Awesome. We'll see. I think you. I think you. If you continue off of this path, you should have no problem with that, man. I. I, I really do. And you know. I think you'll. I think you'll like my, my latest single. And with Fake ID and you, it, has it had a lot of local success in, in Alabama, Georgia, and all that on radio, or or is it more of a you get you know people from other areas that reach out to you that love it. Um, you know, a lot of people around here do love it, and you see it on Instagram stories and Snapchats and Facebook posts, and so it's it's cool. But the uh, I mean, the success it's had in places that I've never even been to before yeah. is, weird, is what's what's killing me, and it's largely because of Spotify and and social media and yep. And all that. it's just, well, that's it's really a, that's awesome, man, and, and we we hope you know I think I don't think it's going nowhere as far as on our top twenty five uh, for any time soon. Uh, we we hope to hear the new the new single come out and feature it on our uh, you know our website and our page, man. And I had, I had a great time, man, talking with you, brother. Uh, you know, it's been a very easy interview for me, and. Uh, I want to thank you, and I also want to thank our sponsors, of course, and our partners that help us do all this and get these guys out there. And that's Southern Sound Outfitters. Uh, check those guys out. They have some great apparel on their website at www.southernsoundoutfitters.com. Uh, they support a lot of great independent artists as well. So if you check out their website, they have featured artists on there. And, you, you know, go give those guys a look at. Uh, also by Cowboys. In Scott, Louisiana, Cowboys Nightclub, Western Store, and Arena. They all uh, always have some great venues and uh, bands and local music that go through the uh, nightclub. And the Western Store, of course, is packed full of all your, all your needs when it comes to boots, jeans. Uh, the, for men, women, kids, the whole nine yards of the arena, all, always featuring some, some good rodeo type stuff. Uh, also by Swamp Gear, Roto Molded Ice Chest. Local local business out of Arnoldville, Louisiana. They they make some some pretty high quality durable ice chests that won't hurt the pocketbook as much as the other guys of um, the big brands. But uh, definitely a great. Check them out at SwampShop.com and uh, all of their their ice chest sizes. And they even have some hats up. I think some new stuff. Check those guys out. And uh, we thank all of them, man. We thank we thank Blaine for stopping by with us, and we look forward to talking with him soon about the new single. Yeah. And Blaine, if there's any, you know, kind of shout outs or, or, or anything you want to say to the people before we before we uh, ride out, I'll let you do so. Yeah. Uh, shout out to my little brother for getting me back in the songwriting. 
Um, I hope he can pull this up out of his rut. He knows what I'm talking about. Um, shout out Corey Rose, Caleb King, um, John Boy Story, you know, Charlie for having his success and, and kind of sparking a fire back under me too because I want to, you know, I want to be up there with them guys. Um, <clears throat> shout, you know, shout out most of them. I'm loving for sharing my stuff. Appreciate them. Uh, you know, my family, thank you too. Uh, appreciate you. And uh, BlaineRoad.com, it'll be up by Friday. Uh, you know, go to Facebook, follow me on there. Go to, for sure, go to Instagram and give me a follow. Just search Blaine Road, you, you'll see it. Awesome, man. Well, we thank you for uh, stopping by with us and, and talking about the song and, and reaching out, man. So we definitely hope for big things for you, man. 